small you are for such a great destiny. Why? What do you mean? What destiny? Your gift, Merlin, was given to you for a reason. So there is a reason. <laughs> Arthur is the once and future king who will unite the land of Albion. Right. But he faces many threats, from friend and foe alike. I don't see what this has to do with me. Everything. Without you, Arthur will never succeed. Without you, there will be no Albion. No. No, you've got this wrong. There is no right or wrong. Only what is and what isn't. Well, I'm serious. If anyone wants to go and kill him, they can go ahead. In fact, I'll give them a hand. <laughs> None of us can choose our destiny, Merlin. And none of us can escape. <laughs> This isn't funny. Oh, it is. It is the thought of Uther marrying a troll. Was it a very public affair? Public enough. <laughs> I was beginning to hope you'd forgotten me. I don't think so. The problem is, young warlock, that you wish to talk, but you don't wish to listen. The last time we met, you chose to ignore my advice and overrule me. I I'm sorry. A dragon lord should never abuse their power. What reason do you have to summon me this time? You are a creature of magic? And only a creature of magic could hope to understand. Uther is to fight a young sorcerer in the tournament tomorrow. Gaius wants me to prevent him from using magic, but if I do that, there is every chance he will die. Your choice is a hard one, young warlock. Yet you, like I, must hold hope that Arthur will bring about a new age. An age where the likes of you and I are respected once again. If he sees his father killed through the use of magic, it will harden his mind forever. No, no, there, there must be some other way. To see one of your kin die is never an easy thing. But all great struggles demand sacrifice. I am sorry, young warlock. I wish I had some words to help you. Do you know why I'm here? It may surprise you, Merlin, but my knowledge of your life is not universal. It's to do with Arthur. His life's in danger. He will die unless I can make a weapon that will kill the dead. So what do you come to ask of me? Will you burnish it, to save Arthur? The dead do not return without reason. Who has he come for? Uther. Then let him take his vengeance, and the Wraith will die without my aid. But it's Arthur who's going to fight him. You have to save him. That is your destiny, young warlock, not mine. But if Arthur fights the Wraith and dies, Camelot will have no heir. I will have no destiny. A weapon forged with my assistance will have great power. I know. You do not know. You can only guess. You have not seen what I have seen. If you had, perhaps you would not ask this of me. What do you mean? In the wrong hands, this sword could do great evil. It must be wielded by Arthur and him alone. I understand. You must do more than understand. You must promise. I promise. I tried, but he just took ah! it. He's the king, I couldn't stop him. The sword was born of the old magic. You have no idea of its power. 
In the hands of Uther, it will bring only evil. I'll get back. You have betrayed me. You are not ready to be trusted. I'll bring it to you. You can destroy it. What is made cannot be unmade. So what do you want me to do? Take the sword far from here and place it where no mortal man can ever find it. I'm supposed to do. You've got the wrong person. That's it. Goodbye. If only it were so easy to escape one's destiny. How can it be my destiny to protect someone who hates me? A half cannot truly hate that which makes it whole. Very soon, you shall learn that. Oh, great. Just what I needed, another riddle. That your and Arthur's path lies together is but the truth. What is that supposed to mean? You know, young warlock, this is not the end. It is the beginning. Does Arthur live? Yes. The sword worked. It was incredible. Amazing. As I promised. But... Yes. Things didn't quite go according to plan. I mean, they did, except... It wasn't Arthur who wielded the sword. It was Uther.